Hello and welcome to the second in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering textures and materials and we'll explore a little bit more of Unity's settings. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things and you can also join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So if you remember last time we left this big white cube just pretending it's a ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in some assets to create the ground and create some walls as well as explore some settings and see what else we can do. So firstly we need to create an area where we can store all of our assets. So down here in the project panel you have assets. Remember you've got that scenes folder there. Well let's right click here, create and let's create a new folder and we'll call this textures. And let's go into that folder and I'm going to drag and drop some textures into this folder which is these two right here. And I will leave a link in the description and in the pinned comment for you to click on and it will take you to where you can find these textures. It's real simple. Just download, unzip the file and then bring them into Unity. Just make sure you unzip them first because Unity doesn't like it when you try dragging and dropping from a zipped file. Just extract them. So what have we brought in here? Well, we've brought in a floor texture and a wall texture. Now, common belief would make you think that a texture goes on an object, but that isn't strictly true. So there has to be something in between the texture going onto an object. So think of it as here's your object, something is applied to the object, and then that texture is applied to that something. And that something I keep referring to is called a material. Now you can theoretically drag and drop a texture onto an object but what it will do is it will create a material in the meantime. So if we drag and drop the floor onto here you can see the mouse icon does change. So let go and there we go. The texture is theoretically applied to that object but you can see down here a new folder has automatically been created called materials. So if we click on this object now, you can see that we have a couple of different options down here. You'll notice floor, material. So the material is the component of that object and the texture is applied to that material. Now there are other ways of applying textures and materials to objects and we'll cover that a little later on. But let's now explore this object. Let's zoom in a little bit and look at it. It looks a little bit distorted. So what that basically means is that this particular texture might be a little bit too small for this particular object. So let's change the scale to 20 by 1 by 20. Now you might be thinking, why am I not changing the Y scale? Well, that just means it'll be very, very tall. So if we do that to 10, you can see that's now really, really thick. And it doesn't need to be because it is a ground after all. But it does mean that the texture is then wrapped on every single side of the object. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Think of it as this side here will never ever be seen by the player. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And you'll find that this occurs in most games that you look at these days. If it's never meant to be seen by the player, it doesn't really matter. If you take a look at Boundary, uh, boundary Break sorry, by She Says, you'll notice a lot of the techniques that developers use and you'll see things like this actually occurring. So what else can we do with this material? Well, if we click on the material itself down here, you'll notice that we have a completely different set of options. And one set of options that I'm going to use right now is this tiling. So you'll see you have two sets of tiling here. This is the secondary map. Don't worry too much about it right now, but if we change this one to two, and this one to two, what that's effectively done is apply the material, the sorry, the, the texture four times to each side. So the tiling is two by two. And that's this one just here. Now there are some other options to go into with all of these materials, but we're going to save them for next tutorial because they'll come in handy when we deal with lighting and shadows next time. 
So what else can we do with this? Well, let's actually create a wall now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this object that already exists in our game. I'm going to hold control and press D. And what that will do is duplicate it. It doesn't look like it has here in the scene panel, but it has here in the hierarchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to press F2 and rename this to just simply wall. And if I change the scale, so on the X, let's have it as one. And you can already see that objects are intersecting. So that means that we definitely have a duplicate. But what if we change the Y to 20? You can see now they are indeed intersecting. However, if we hold control, and move on the x-axis, we can move and snap into position. We just need to move it a little bit more to about there. So now that's flush against our ground. Let's do the same with the y. We can drag it up and make it flush with the ground once again. Let's just have a look. I should probably zoom out a little bit so I've got more room. And there we go. Is that flush? I think that's flush. Not quite. One more. Doesn't matter too much if it isn't right now. So now let's apply a wall texture to this object. Let's do it a different way. So previously we applied the texture straight to the object. Let's create the material first. So down here in the project panel, let's go to materials. Let's right click create. And obviously this is a massive list, but halfway down you'll find material. If we click on that and let's name this material, um, let's name it the same as what our texture is going to be. So it's wall 01, I believe. So you can already see we have a completely plain blank uh, material. So how do we get our texture onto this material? Quite simple. You have some options down here. And this albedo will be the color. So if we change the color to red, for example, you'll see, yep, that looks red. But we'll do that in just a moment. We'll play a little bit more with the colors and materials. So let's set it back to white. And here, you'll see a little faint square next to albedo. If we click the little icon next to it, you'll be able to select a texture. So you'll find that wall icon right there. So double click. And that wall icon, uh, sorry, wall texture will now be applied to the material. So then let's drag and drop that material onto the wall. And there we go. We now have a wall object. It looks a little bit distorted. So let's change that to be a little bit more in line with how things look. So let's change the Y axis to 16. Maybe too much. Let's do 15. That looks okay. So then let's drag that down to be flush with our ground once again. And already it's starting to look like an actual game, believe it or not. So what we can do is let's now take this wall, let's duplicate it, and let's rotate it to create a wall this side. So I am going to rotate on the Y by 90 degrees, and you'll see perfectly rotated. So Drag, holding the control button to snap it, and all the way over here to snap it there. So it's starting to look like a room. Now that makes sense. Not too sure about the height of it. I'm still not convinced. So let's change the height. So what we can do is we can select both of our walls, and because they have the identical number in the y value, we can change them both at the same time. You'll notice here you can't change the x, or well you can if you want to, and you can't change the y, but you can if you want to. But what that will do is it will set them both the same. So for example, if I put that as 5, it won't really keep them aligned, because we already have them aligned here at this join. What that will do is put them both at the same, and that will misalign them. So any number or setting or anything that is indicated by a dash means don't try and change it when you have several objects selected at the same time. So let's change the scale. Let's have it as 10 maybe. 
Does that look okay? I think 10 looks okay. So with both objects selected, let's now drag them down. And there we go, flush with the floor. So what else can we do with materials? There is loads of other things that we can do with materials. Like I said, we'll go into it even more next tutorial when we uh, play with lighting and shadows. But what we can do for now is let's change the albedo on the wall. Let's change the coloring to a more green color. And you can see that the texture remains. However, it's highly tinted by whatever color you change it to. Uh, you've got your red, green, and blue settings. And here is your alpha. This won't make too much of a difference on things like walls. What that means is basically how opaque or how translucent or how transparent an object is. But again, that's something we'll get into at a later date. You can change the metallicness of it as well to make it look well darker in this case. Um, but I don't think there's a real need to change any of the colors in this sense because they'll all do just fine. So let's get into a tiny little bit of world building before we finish this tutorial and how quickly we can go in and out of doing whatever we need to do. So we have a ground. Let's hold control press D and build another ground. Let's hold control press D, build another ground. And you can see just how quick this is all coming together. But what I've done there is too quick. If you notice, you'll see a little distortion right there. What that means is these two objects are not flush. They are intersecting each other. Pull them apart, and there you go. Not a problem at all. They are flush together. So, like I said, you can get these assets uh, by clicking the link that is in the description or in the pinned comment. Uh, head over there and you can download them for free. Uh, next tutorial, like I said, we will cover lighting, we'll cover shadows, and we'll make the graphics of our strange looking room look better than they are now. Not Maybe not fantastic, but they'll look a lot better than what they are. Lighting and shadows play a massive role in any type of game like this, and it's important to get them just right. So we'll play around with some of the settings in lighting and shadows next time. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to this series, and I'll see you next time.